Hi, my name is Roger Rainville. Uh, my wife and I own Board of View Farm here in Alberg, Vermont, and uh, we host uh, research projects for the Uni University of Vermont Extension, and we have been given a task to build a hops yard. Uh, our goal is to put in a one-acre yard, and uh, going by what the industry standards show, uh, these are some of the items that are needed to build this hops yard. One thing that's kind of uh, amazing or it's a little overwhelming is when you realize how much cable is needed to hold up these hops. And on a one acre hops yard, it takes roughly uh, five to 7,000 feet of cable. So this is a big purchase item that uh, people need to realize is quite an expense. But these hops, from what I'm told, uh, will produce around 20 tons of weight on these cables in a one acre uh, hops yard so it's real uh, important that it's well trellised so that it'll, it, with winds and weather conditions the hops yards will sustain the weight because the last thing that I'm told you want to do is have to go out there and pick these hops off the ground when a cable breaks so that said uh, this is just an example of the cable these are this is a 5 16 cable uh, this tool is what's used to hook the cable up to stretch them because they're so heavy. I uh, feel it's probably a real important item to have to tighten the cables up. These are turnbuckles that uh, we'll be putting these anchors in. These are four foot anchors. We'll screw them in the ground. We'll hook these turnbuckles to them and the cable will go on the other end. And that's to keep our cables tight. Uh, these will go outside the hops yard and all the poles all the way around. Of course, and, and we need also uh, cable clamps to cable all the cables together and make the eyes to hook into these turnbuckles. These are eye screws, and this is something we're going to try here this year, is put one of these screws in each pole and run our cables through the top and uh, to keep the cables uh, on top of the poles so they can support the weight of the hops. So this is basically all the materials that you'll need and uh, we'll be looking at the poles that we'll be putting up and I guess that's it for now. This is uh, what we're using for auger for uh, setting our pulse holes. It's a commercial grade hydraulic auger and uh, it's 12 inch and it's really necessary if you're putting in these large poles because sometimes you hit stone and you've got to get down at least four feet so the frost don't push them up. So uh, this is what we're using and it seems to be still working pretty good. These being 20 foot poles, we, what we do is we mark them off in center so to make sure we hook our chains in the center of the pole so that they lift properly so when you go to set them so your big head goes in the ground so marking your poles in the center and tying your chain in the center swings your pole with, a, with the big end down that goes into the ground. Setting our poles, uh, we want to again, we're good, trying to make sure that we get these at least four feet deep. So we just, we have one man just guiding a pulse in a hole. You have to be careful not to set the pole too much of an angle when you put it in because it uh, drags dirt in the hole with it and we're not getting our pole in quite four feet deep. We, we're, we're using tamarack for our uh, poles. Uh, these grow uh, abundantly in this area and they're really high, highly rot resistant. They're a softwood, but they're a very hard softwood, um, so they are uh, very effective for what we're trying to use here for our poles. And for the outside poles, we're using the tamarack. For inside poles that we're just holding the, the cables up with, we're using cedars. 
and those are plentiful around here also. Uh, the reason the poles are 22 foot long is because we're building a 16 foot trellis. We're going in the ground four feet so that the frost doesn't push them back out. And you'll notice the poles lean outside. Now the perimeter poles we all we lean outside because we came in from the top to uh, ground anchor at the bottom to uh, hold the tension on the cables. And because the poles are leaning out, we needed to cut these two feet longer, so that's why these are 22 foot. The inside poles are 20 foot and they're in the ground four foot long, which will give us a 16 foot high trellis.